It brought us Chekhov and Stravinsky, Yuri Gagarin and the Kalashnikov, Catherine the Great and Pussy Riot. But did Russia really swing the Brexit vote? Philosopher A.C. Grayling says the answer is da. Without foul play and Russian interference, Britain would have voted to remain in the EU. Now, the government staggers from Brexit vote to Brexit vote, precarious and confused, but still winning when it matters. Just when you think no political party could be in more of a mess over Brexit than the Tories, then up pops good old Jezza's Labour Party to make you think again. Amid the shambles and vacillation in both major parties, the Leavers console themselves that we are still leaving, if not on anything like the terms they'd hoped. Most Remainers take comfort from that, reconciled to leaving, but on the softest of terms that makes rejoining the EU, well, not entirely out of the question at some stage. But the provisional wing of the Remainers wants no truck with such defeatist talk. It wants to reverse the referendum decision. It wants to reverse it now. What's more, it thinks we'd never have voted to leave in the first place if it hadn't been for those interfering pesky Ruskies. Here's Anthony Grayling with his take of the week. There are many reasons for thinking that the outcome of the EU referendum is questionable. Now, one of them is outside interference, and especially Russian interference. Now that Mr. Aaron Banks has confessed to having had boozy lunches with the Russian ambassador, it's harder than ever to quell those suspicions. After all, Russia has an interest in destabilizing the EU and probably would like to see it break up. But leave aside the question of Russian interference in the referendum. It's thrown a stark light, this whole situation, on our democratic order, which depends upon people being honourable. We've heard from Mr Banks and his colleague uh, Andrew Wigmore that they deliberately led people up the garden path, that they played on their emotions rather than on facts and reason. What we really need to do is to ensure that our democratic system works properly. We need to codify it so that everybody can be clear about the right thing to do. And in this age of social media, the Electoral Commission is outdated and in any case virtually toothless. It can't control the amount of money spent on campaigns. And when you look at the contemptuous and arrogant behaviour of Mr Banks and Mr Wigmore before the Parliamentary Committee, you see that Parliament can't hold people to account unless they want to be held to account. As for our power-grabbing government, their narrow victories in the EU withdrawal bill votes this week were only possible because there is no formal separation of powers between the executive and the legislature. Whipped by their party leaders, MPs can't vote on their conscience or judgment about what's in the best interests of the country. Instead, they're mindlessly waving Brexit through, the most gobsmacking harm that this country has ever inflicted on itself. No matter how confidently David Davis says that Brexit can't be reversed, it can be and it will be. The reason why Brexiters oppose a people's vote on the final deal is because they know that if there is such a vote, Remain will win it. As Brexit crumbles under the weight of its own contradictions and allegations of corruption, voters are changing their minds. Halting Brexit is no longer a question of if, but of when. Hey, well, that tells them. And Anthony Grilling joins us. And now, welcome to the programme. Let's just get something factual out of the way first. What evidence is there that the Russians had any influence on the Brexit referendum? Well, I think there's been some very remarkable investigative journalism done by The Observer. Uh, and uh, it looks as though uh, Mr Banks, Mr Wigmore, before the parliamentary committee, uh, didn't deny that they'd um, been having lunches with the Russian no, ambassador. But, but lots of people have lunch with the Russian ambassador. What is the evidence that the Russians uh, attempted to influence the referendum? Well, it would be very interesting to see indeed if uh, the Home Secretary carries through with his uh, suggestion that he might look at the possibility of criminal charges, for example, we might see some of the hard evidence that the you, investigative journalists have been digging but up. But you haven't got the evidence. I don't myself, no. But you've made the claim. 
without the evidence. No, no, I haven't made the claim myself. Well, you I've have. Just... You've claimed that the, the, we wouldn't have even voted for Brexit if it hadn't been for the Russians. Oh, that claim, yes. So, but, but you have no evidence to back that up. I do. I have evidence just to suggest that the debate about the way the uh, Leave campaign was run, uh, about the uh, overspending on the part of both wings of the Leave campaign, uh, about the fact that the people who were involved in the Leave campaigns had a, a lot of contact with people outside the United Kingdom and especially in Russia, this begins to add up no, to a story no, which I said in that... None in of that, that's uh, evidence at all. Not a single bit of evidence that would survive a minute in court. Do you know, if you were, were um, talking to, say, a, a scientist in a laboratory who was uh, looking at initial hypotheses and, and uh, trying to work out where you might go to conduct an experiment, uh, you, you would be following your, your nose about well, the suspicions okay. that have been raised by a situation like this Suspicions one. are one thing, evidence is the other. But anyway, let, let's move on. What, did, what do you make of the overall uh, uh, argument of, of the take? Well, at, at least A.C. Grayling is honest enough to say that he wants to reverse the decision the British people has made by having another referendum, whereas many people who I think think the same thing uh, refuse to admit that that is what they're trying to do, to reverse the decision of the British people. Now, if you want to lecture people about democracy, uh, uh, it is perfectly clear that the British people were told that they would vote on once only. They were told that their vote would be decisive, that Parliament would then implement the decision that they made. All of that was absolutely unambiguous. I understand, I think you chaired a meeting at the European Commission yesterday, I understand that it is the European view that referendums should be held and held again and held again until the people produce the result that the establishment wants in the first place. This is what was done in the case of Denmark, in the case of France, in the case of Ireland. And it comes as a surprise to people like you in the European Commission that in Britain our democracy works on the basis that you tell people what the vote is about and then you trust them because we are a democracy. Can we now, the vote, the, vote, the vote hasn't okay. worked out the way yeah. that you wanted no, no. and okay. in your paternalistic way yeah. you believe that the British people have got it wrong and in your paternalistic way you go on to tell the people that they must now vote for a second time. Let me respond, please. May we? Uh, just unpick a few things there. Firstly, it wasn't the European Commission it yesterday. Was it was a group, it was a group of, of uh, British Remainers meeting. Um, we very often invite people from Parliament to come along and tell us what's going on. Be able to ask you had Mr. Verhofstadt, didn't you? It had nothing to do Is with the European right? Commission. Was it yesterday. him you saw? No, no. no. Oh, 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 but that was months ago. Months okay. ago. You talk about the, the British people. I mean, this is such, such a canard. It was 37% of a restricted electorate. When the uh, um, uh, franchise was uh, uh, handed out for the um, EU referendum, people who had a genuine material interest in the outcome of it, our own expats, for example, EU citizens who live in this country, who are married to Brits, who bring their children up here and paying their taxes here, they weren't given a voice. And of that electorate... But, but, but these no, were come the on, rules. Come on a second, I'm sorry. These, these you want the facts. Rules. You want facts. Of that electorate, 37% of that electorate voted to leave. Under what circumstances in any mature... Uh, constitution could that count well, as you, a mandate for a major you, you, you constitutional name, you change? You name any other decision. You talk about the British made by people. 16 million people. That's 37 percent of the electorate is 26 percent oh. of the population. So don't use the phrase the British people because right. the British people haven't decided. Let okay? me bring Liz. That's number one. Let no, me, no, 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 I want to bring. One final point. One well, final I point. Need to bring Liz, Liz in. We would love to have Liz in, but just one final point. And, and in really a mature, sensible, grown-up democracy. Our parliament should twice. have met after that. Our, pa our uh, uh, parliament ought to have met after the referendum and they should have asked themselves the following question. This was an explicitly advisory referendum. No, it wasn't. 30%. No, it wasn't. That's Prime Minister, not, that's Prime Minister I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Would Michael, I'm going to bring Liz in. I'm sorry. You've got to get the facts right. You don't get to dominate this. I'm not, You've I already don't want to, had I just want to get the facts right. I want to bring right. Liz Kendall because people in. Talk no, yeah, right. well, people I want to bring Liz Kendall in. Because people talk such a lot of BS about this. Yeah, all right. Well, people will make up their mind who's talking that. Liz Kendall. Lots of Remainers deny they want to thwart Brexit. But they really do. Isn't Mr Grayling just being honest? Some do, and they're pretty honest about it in, in the Commons. There are some MPs who said they do want to overturn it, but many who said we don't. What we're trying to do is find a way through that brings the country together and, and solves the problem. But what's wrong w with his line of trying to... I, if you really disagree strongly with it, what's you wrong should, with trying to... Revert? I mean, nothing is forever. Say it. Then you should say it. And you don't? No. But you think it? No. You don't? I, 
always accepted the result of that referendum. What I'm trying to do is figure out a way that we can not screw the economy, save jobs and keep a close relationship with the EU. And I understand your frustration about talk of the will of the people, as if everybody who voted leave or remain had all exactly the same views. But where I would disagree with you is, people in Parliament aren't just towing the party line. They are voting with their conscience. They are trying to work across the House. And I think, actually, for all the problems, we've seen Parliament doing a really good job. You, well, you want to reverse it. I do. Uh, uh, how, in your view, is the most likely way that could happen? With, with another, with a people's vote on the final deal. Let the people... A second referendum, but not, not like the first, in the sense that it would be on the deal itself on rather the deal than the itself. principle. Yeah, on the deal itself. Let's have a look and see whether uh, what we've got at the moment, as full members of the EU, is going to be bettered by something. Let's see whether our economy is going to flourish under the new arrangements. What would be wrong with that? Well, it's, it's not the deal that was done. And, and a moment ago, A.C. Grayling was saying that talking about the British people was nonsense and rubbish. And now he's saying that it should be the people's choice. But the people have already made a choice. And, and I, I, I was in this studio before the referendum and I kept saying, you see, if the referendum goes the way the establishment doesn't want it, they'll soon be back saying there ought to be a second referendum, which is what they've done to every other European country. Because it's part of the bullying culture of the European Union that if a people defies oh. what the establishment wants to do, well, they, they, have, they, have, to, no, they the, have to be bullied, they the, have to be punished, they you, have you to be threatened. That, uh, point. In the general no, election, I actually... I haven't talked about being bullied and threatened, in, which in we are. General with things election, like being told we can't be in, be in the Galileo uh, project. And it's because of all this bully, bullying and paternalism that you lost the <laughs> referendum in the first place. So sorry, and I, and I mean, you shouldn't just, be confident about a second referendum. Can I just because say, I believe there was a general the election, fact, Michael. Michael, Michael yes. There was a general election. May said, give me a mandate for my hard Brexit. And she lost her majority. So there are different ways of giving people a say. And I'm afraid at the last election, she didn't get the answer she wanted. Hasn't uh, Brexit, in a way, discombobbed? You. I mean, you are a, a respected professor, but you've suggested that the government sent a Royal Navy frigate to the South China Sea so the Chinese could sink it and change the news agenda. You've called Brexiteers vermin at 17.4 million people. You call for a general strike to halt Brexit. Okay, stop right there. I mean, look, and the, you call the thing... for ultra Remainers. Uh, they, you said they're being silenced by the forces of the state, which I guess is no. why you're not here tonight. No, no, uh, come on. I mean, th this, All is, of that's uh, this, true. Is, this is absurd, honestly. I made a joke about the frigate, right? I didn't call the people who voted leave vermin. I said there were vermin I named four people in the Conservative Party and one person outside it in UKIP, uh, and I called them vermin, uh, and on very good grounds. Why? Because Michael talks about bullying and paternalism and all the rest of it, whereas actually the Leave campaign, which you obviously are in favour of, lied through its teeth, made false promises, so did the deceived. Campaign. I'm sorry, they did not. Oh. And one very good reason why they didn't... Top members of the government lied all the way through the campaign. About what, Michael? Give well, us some lines. Example, £350 million pounds for the uh, National for Health example, Service? For example, the Chancellor of the Exchequer said it would be necessary to have a punishment budget immediately after the vote if we were to vote to leave. That was clearly yeah. not true. All right, let's not, let's, uh, let's not relitigate the last this referendum. This doesn't deal with the issue of why people... Uh, Voted right. to leave. Our guest tonight what is talking about trying to get another right? referendum. Let's not refight the previous one. If you got a second referendum on the deal and you lost, would that be it for you? I would accept it, yes. You would accept it? I would accept it, and I'll tell you why. Because in the two years that have elapsed since the first referendum, we've had some actual facts mm. about what it means to be a member of the EU, about what the impact would be on, on our economy. And this is something which, you know, the leavers, like, like Michael, it's, it's so deeply disappointing. Because what they, what they don't look at is the very best case scenario that the government has put out about the impact shows that our economy would take a big hit. And what does that mean? That means people out of work. That means right. families without a, without a breadwinner in them. That means less money for the NHS and for, and for state oh, education. Okay. As I said, and I all this I, kind of thing. I didn't talk want to about, fight the talk last about arrogance and, and, and uh, paternalism, right. you know, to hell with the people if, who are going to suffer. Because if you if get a second tanks. referendum, but let's go ahead with if it. you get a second referendum, we can go through all that. But for tonight, as we finish, 
How would you rate your chances of, of getting a second referendum? I'm confident that if, uh, 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 firstly, I'm confident that a people's vote is more rather than less likely to happen. The dynamic is moving in that direction. I was uh, uh, okay. visiting... So a, you think it will happen? Oh, yeah, I'm hoping so. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much.